might be an old uh, deputy, former deputy prime minister, but with new circumstances. So uh, we're learning new things about what he thinks about the current state of the world. And it's important because apart from the obvious that he's leading the National Party and he's the Deputy Prime Minister, with that job automatically comes a seat on the National Security Committee of the Cabinet, which is the, you know, the inner sanctum of decision making on anything uh, to do with national security or defence. Um, and that includes sensitive uh, national security questions, including things like um, the review undergo that's now being uh, done into the lease of the Port of Darwin to a Chinese company, Landbridge could involve sensitive foreign investment decisions and other things. And um, on the question of what he said, uh, yes, members of the Coalition Party Room were surprised to hear Barnaby Joyce talking about China. They didn't realise he had strong views about it. Uh, he said, according to people who were in the room, that uh, we are moving away from Pax Americana, that there is a new superpower, uh, that we have to be very vigilant that um, it, this should be a unifying cause, and I think by that he meant unifying the coalition parties, the National Party and the Liberal Party. He said that uh, the coalition had to make sure that voters chose the coalition, not the Labor Party, to preserve our way of life, uh, were the quotes. And that last phrase um, about choosing the coalition over Labor on China policy is mildly troubling, Bev, because it suggests that Barnaby is thinking about politicising Australia's China policy and to date one of the hallmarks and strengths of Australia's China responses has been that it's bipartisan where both major parties have been absolutely firm and united on all the big policy decisions. And that also sounds, Peter, like he's lining up very strongly with Scott Morrison's hardline position against China. And to agree, it's showing a strong nationalist sentiment, which China's often criticised for. Yes, that's right. So uh, while Scott Morrison has been, as we saw last week at the G7, uh, rallying support for Australia's stance in defying China's demands on it, uh, and alerting other leaders, democratic country leaders, about the danger posed by China's intrusions and demands, including handing around uh, the, the list of the 14 demands that the Chinese government has delivered to the Australian government, uh, to show other leaders, uh, apparently with the effect of alarming them when they saw uh, just how strident and intrusive those demands would be. So while Scott Morrison's t trying to toughen uh, the world's position, really, to solidify against an aggressive China, at the same time, the Chinese Communist Party, or the whole country of China, is heading next week into the celebration of the Chinese Communist Party's 100th birthday, its, uh, its centenary. And that's going to be uh, you know, a protracted uh, national frenzy of uh, patriotism, nationalism, uh, probably verging on jingoism, given the rhetoric we've seen recently and certainly from the party-owned media. Uh, and that can only have the effect of uh, hardening Chi uh, Chinese government policy positions in confrontations such as the one with Australia. So I suspect we are seeing a bit of a toughening of uh, political and rhetorical positions on both sides. Yeah. And talking of the Communist Party's 100th anniversary, what would your observations be of where China is positioned at this juncture? There was so much hope as they opened up economically that there would be a few concessions made to give people more freedom. Well, that, that hope uh, is looking more forlorn than it has at any time, probably since the Tiananmen Square massacre in 1989, the reason being uh, that Xi Jinping is uh, a highly repressive figure and it has been uh, launching wave after wave of crackdowns uh, at home on everything uh, from free speech uh, to any kind of critic, civil rights lawyers, religion. Um, uh, there's currently a rectification so-called campaign going on against the state security services, which is essentially a, a purge to uh, ensure loyalists uh, remain in all key positions. Uh, and more broadly, of course, demands that uh, free speech be curbed around the world to protect China's um, well, dignity in the Chinese framing of it, but also uh, just to take some of the pressure off China. And you see that around the world. 
The most blatant in recent days, though, uh, as you know, Bev, has been in Hong Kong, where although free speech and a free press were guaranteed, supposedly guaranteed under the basic law that Beijing's parliament enacted in 1990, uh, there have in fact been some harsh crackdowns on free speech, and the Apple Daily newspaper is uh, is is, a, is the prominent is the showpiece victim, where not only has the founder and proprietor Jimmy Lai been uh, locked up on charges of supporting democracy marches last uh, two years ago, but he's, um, the company has now been raided by 500 police officers in their main office last week, the arrest of five top executives and editors, the seizure of company assets, including about three million Australian dollars equivalent in bank accounts, which the company now says won't, won't allow them to continue trading. The 25-year-old newspaper, a tabloid, and Hong Kong's most popular read, now looks like it uh, may well have to shutter its door, shutter its, itself uh, as soon as the end of this week. Peter, great to talk as always. Thanks so much. Pleasure, Bev.